please introduce yourself and talk about where you are currently and uh, can you also name the piece that you wrote that won the prize? Yeah, so my name is Elijah Steele. Uh, I'm going to be a junior at James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia, uh, coming up in fall of 2017. Uh, I wrote the piece Contraction for Chamber Ensemble that ended up winning the Chamber Flute category. Wonderful. Yes, thank you. I, I had a listen and uh, it's very good. Thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, can you tell us about your inspirations for this piece in particular, uh, if anything inspired you? Yeah, so me and my teacher, uh, professor, decided that it was time for me to write something programmatic or something that has an overarching theme that is stuck to and has parts of that. Uh, so one of the things that I did a lot when I was a small child was I built just pot in my house uh, out of anything that's in the toy box and just tried to like climb in and tried to build stuff that would transport me or whatever as a little kid um, and I would call them contraptions so that's where the name comes from Okay. but I listened I, I'm a huge fan of uh, Judd Greenstein um, and I listened to a piece he wrote for the Now Ensemble called Change that me and my professor dissected and it is probably the greatest piece of music uh, I've ever heard for contemporary ensemble, uh, and it inspired a lot of what I did in contraction. Great. Um, so you mentioned Judd Greenstein as an influence. Do you have any other musical or non-musical influences on your compositional style? Yeah, so it's not exactly too prevalent in contraption, but or I'm tending towards jazz harmonies. I really like everything in the jazz world. Uh, I love extended chords that have nines, elevens, and thirteens on them. I really like uh, not having to limit myself to four notes. Uh, I did a jazz festival trip to Montreal, Canada with my uh, university. I love with everything, with uh, the extended harmonies there. And I feel like it wasn't being used enough in contemporary ensemble music. Uh, mm -hmm. So Judd Greenstein, uh, John Adams, and then a lot of a lot of as far as harmonies go, because I just really like that sound. Can you mention? I'm sorry, you cut out on the last composer you mentioned. Can you say that composer's name again? Uh, Judd Green, Adams, and uh, a lot of jazz stuff. Okay. Mainly, mainly uh, Snarky Puppy is a pretty huge group right now. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I definitely noticed um, some minimalist influences in that. Um, it always surprises me that it seems like the rest of the world has caught on to how great that music is 50 years after it was begun yeah. and, and started, you know, out on the West Coast. And, um, of course, now it's everywhere in TV and uh, commercials, music, uh, movies, etc. And uh, because of that, what I heard in your uh, piece, Contraption, I was wondering if um, if you have that goal in mind uh, for yourself, are you headed, are you drawn to that career path where you want to compose for uh, media, or is it just kind of you're going to wait and see what happens? Yeah, I would love to compose for media. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the thing that got me into music was video game music. Uh, video game music has been huge in my life as I play video games when I was younger. I don't play them very much anymore. Uh, I play them whenever I can, but I don't have a lot of time to play them in the capacity that I used to. So uh, I really, my dream is absolutely right for video games specifically. Uh, but yeah, I've always been conscious about what would sound good and what makes media music sound so uh, attention grabbing or as the fact that people consume it and really like it. So that's right. always on my mind. Yeah. Great. So since this is for a flute competition, what do you think is the most difficult thing about writing when you write for flute? 
And what do you like about writing for flute? So, yeah. Um, one of the things I really like about flute is that it sounds, in my opinion, its best sound to me is arguably the least projecting sound, which is the lower notes mm-hmm. on flute. Everything that's down there sounds so... And when you're in a like this where you don't have a group that's going to overpower it you can get away with having a lot more of those notes down there um right but one one of the challenges of writing for flute is just always i'm afraid to go ledger lines above because ledger lines to a percussionist looks like holy moly what's going on there um so yeah if if i if i use a flute in something i'll usually write it down an octave and make a little note in the program that says you know, put this up an octave once you're done with it. Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm just not, I, I can't write in ledger lines above. That's just crazy to me as far as having to count stuff. <laughs> right, I did notice that too. I thought, oh, he didn't really use the, the top range of the flute very much. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I, um, you should, hopefully, you'll get over that fear. Uh, that's where we project yeah. best. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I know, it is kind of scary. We have to overcome our fears too in that yeah. uh, range um so are you currently writing anything for flute currently not um i would love to but the thing i'm working on currently is a string duet okay so the whole plan is that was the first thing i had written using mostly non-percussion instruments Mm -hmm. okay so now we're going no percussion instruments right uh which is slightly painful um (laughs) but oh well yeah i i i am band arranging as far as uh like marching band shows so that has a lot of flute stuff in it right Uh, but other than the marching band aspect of it i'm not currently uh working on anything else i'm I'm not, I'm only working on like one piece at a time, really. Right. From a logistical standpoint. So if I, if I had the room to work on multiple, then I, I would definitely do. Right. Yeah. It's hard when you're in school. It's, it's a lot of, a lot of work. Um, what are you trying to accomplish with your music? Um, I guess, you know, are you, we talked about wanting to write for media do you have anything more specific or perhaps from a philosophical standpoint? Um, what, what would you like your music to do, I guess? Yeah, so music needs to sound good. That doesn't need to be this really romanticized version of classical music or anything like that. It just needs to sound good and people need to want to listen to it, in my opinion. I, I really don't like the idea of writing music for myself that stretches the boundaries of what sounds good. Um, so you can see contraption that while some stuff might get interesting rhythmically or interesting timbrely, I'm not a huge fan of going into the, you know, a tonal side of things as much as I like to listen to that occasionally and study it. I don't really like the way it sounds, but I can appreciate it. Right. But that's not how I, that's not how I want my music to sound. Um, right. And maybe that's me being naive, or maybe that's me just trying what I want to hear, and the music that I want to look seek out is the music that I want to try and write. Right. Well, I mean, when you think about it, that music, the twelve tone stuff, is almost a hundred years old now. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it would be unusual to ask people to write in that style now, but there yeah. are definitely some who do. Now that you're studying composition at the college level, what would you like to tell aspiring composers who are in high school or younger? Uh, what do you wish you knew about it when you were their age? Uh, point back up your data. <laughs> um, I lost a lot of stuff I did in high school, and that very much changed the route of schools I applied to. Mm. Some stuff that certain schools out of high school require that you 
pieces right out of high school so that you go right into their program, whereas James Madison, you can submit any time you're there uh, and you start your composition core curriculum when you become a junior. Okay. Um, so it's not expecting that you've written stuff in high school. Right. But if you have the ability to, um, there are really cheap versions of Sibelius and Finale that will help students out. Or, I mean, you could just download the trial and never save stuff. Um, I, that's kind of an awful <laughs> suggestion as far as, like, legality goes. But right. there's news score, right. stuff like that. If you have an idea, just write it down. No one's going to criticize you. You never have to show it to anyone. Um, and high school directors are way more willing to put together stuff you think you are. Can you say that last part one more time, please? It cut out. Uh, high school directors are more willing to do pieces that you've written in some small fashion, whether it be percussion ensemble, chamber, or even a full-blown concert piece than you think they are, because if they are truly a good about their students, if I had the opportunity to play some of my stuff, well, as far as percussion on comp goes, and really get my first taste of that, so I think that's really important. Maybe if you go to a huge program, uh, high school, that's not feasible, but yeah, there's no reason to not write in high school. It's the same if you wanted to be an or uh, a blogger you just write the stuff down on paper or write or make a blog on word wordpress so right yeah all right great um i'll ask one more question what right. led you what led you to become a composer <laughs> um so when i was in high school i got the opportunity to write hit music for my high school's pit which I played in a marching band. Stock shows from a band website, basically, that had really bad hit parts. Okay. Like the, the mallet parts for like the flute part doubled on marimba, which even if the flute part's hard, a hard high school flute part is not gonna make a hard high school mallet part. So my director said, yeah, you know, even if you just literally copy the stuff that's there and add to it, that's better than what we have, so you can take this opportunity. And when I did it, people liked what I did, and I really liked the feeling of creating something and people liking what I did. So that's one of the real reasons that I got into composing, is because I find it enjoyable to compose, but I find it enjoyable when people enjoy the thing that I put out. Right. Yeah. Great! Well, it's been really wonderful talking with you, and thank you so much for writing new music. We, you know, musicians everywhere appreciate composers for doing that. Uh, we're always looking for new and fun stuff to play. And um, I'm really, congratulations on winning, and keep going. <laughs>